growing oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico is prompting changes within the Interior Department. The department announcing reforms today to toughen oversight of offshore oil and gas drilling operations. And joining us now from the White House, the Secretary of the Interior, Ken Salazar. Mr. Secretary, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, Wolf. Best case scenario and worst case scenario, when does the oil spill end? You know, best case is that it starts coming uh, into some kind of containment over the weekend and, uh, and into next week and the next couple of weeks. Worst case uh, is you're looking at August and a relief well. But we're doing everything possible to make sure that it happens uh, just as fast as uh, humanly possible. Realistically, that best case scenario over the next several days, you get, a, you get, your, handle, you get your hand on it. Uh, how realistic is that? Here are the two key things that will happen over the next uh, several days. Uh, first, on this Thursday, uh, we should know whether or not this alternative uh, uh, top hat coffer dam is going to work. Uh, that is uh, what is scheduled to happen on this Thursday. And then the next uh, key date is uh, Saturday, because by Saturday they will have the diagnostics completed through x-rays and gamma rays and uh, pressure ratings uh, to be able to make uh, decisions about what the next steps are in terms of junk kill or top valve or uh, a new uh, blowout prevention mechanism. And so the key dates really are this Thursday and Saturday relative to being able to predict what will happen in the future in controlling the fall. And if the smaller cap, the so-called top hat, doesn't work, uh, the, this, the next step would be to just take garbage and junk and throw it down there to try to stop it. Is that right? Well, with a top hat, uh, Wolf, what they have is a top hat uh, that they will deploy, but they also have uh, another redundant mechanism in there. So if that doesn't work, they're going to try to just go directly into the pipe. That essentially won't stop the leak. All that does is to mitigate the amount of oil that's flowing out at some percentage, uh, maybe as high as 85 percent, 75 percent. Nobody knows exactly what. But ultimately, the solution here is to stop the leak, and that's where they, they will move to these other alternatives like the junk fill and the valve and the bop and ultimately the relief wells. Do you have a better sense how many gallons a day are, are, are being spilled out there? You know, the estimates are still the same. Uh, the number that uh, has been used in estimates is about uh, 5,000 barrels per day. 5,000 barrels a day. And that's still your best guess? Well, that's uh, the number that has been used. Uh, there are efforts uh, underway to try to quantify uh, the amount that has leaked uh, from the beginning now that uh, this uh, incident is in day 21. And there may be some better numbers that are coming out, but that's the number that has been used. If this goes on for several more weeks, if not a few more months, would this be the worst environmental disaster ever? Well, I think there have been uh, huge environmental disasters. Uh, obviously, Exxon uh, Valdez, uh, Chernobyl, and other things. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that it's very bad as it is today. And uh, our charge is uh, to do everything that we can uh, to protect uh, the environment and uh, to protect the people of the Gulf Coast. Uh, the president has made it clear to all of us from day one uh, that uh, we are to be relentless in our purpose. And uh, we will not rest until we get the job done. Based on what you know right now, is the Department of Interior too cozy with the oil and natural gas industry? You know, based on uh, what I know now, Wolf, uh, the investigations will tell us more about what happened uh, in this particular incident. But it does seem to me that uh, a separation, uh, which uh, I directed today, to have the revenue functions uh, uh, separate from the police functions of the Minerals Management Service are very important. On the one hand, what you have is the Minerals Management Service uh, collecting about $13 billion in revenue for the American taxpayer every day uh, through the leasing of uh, America's uh, oil and gas resources. And on the other hand, you have uh, MMS having the responsibility also of policing uh, those efforts. And so splitting it up uh, is something that uh, makes sense uh, and something that we will do. And you did that because you feared there, there was a built-in conflict of interest between these two parts of the Minerals Management Service? We, we have been working on this effort uh, for a long time. It uh, started last year with uh, new ethics guidelines, uh, ethics reforms, uh, with uh, elimination of royalty and kind programs and a whole host of reforms that are underway. This reform is one that was in the works uh, before this incident happened. Uh, this incident, uh, from our point of view, uh, made it necessary to expedite uh, what we were planning on doing. The Washington Post had a story in early May, May 5th uh, to be specific, that the Department of In Interior exempted BP's uh, Gulf of Mexico drilling operation only uh, a few months before this disaster, coming to the conclusion that a massive oil spill was unlikely. What happened? Was there a mistake 
that uh, the Department of Interior made that gave this exemption to another round of inspections for this specific oil drill, uh, drilling operation? Yeah, Wolf, uh, this particular uh, well and this lease has been subject to significant environmental reviews. Uh, first, there's the environmental review that happened with a five-year plan and, and its adoption uh, in the prior administration. Uh, second of all, there's another environmental uh, review and environmental impact statement that's conducted uh, prior to the lease sale. So there are multiple layers of environmental reviews uh, that actually uh, occurred. You know, what happened here um, will be uh, uh, taken uh, with the approach that we want fresh eyes and uh, accountability. We don't want any uh, stone left unturned as we find uh, the answers to what happened here and why it happened. Uh, and so we will have uh, independent reviews and investigations that are coming in that uh, we have announced uh, that will make sure that we get uh, uh, to the answers to these very fundamental questions. Because at the end of the, of the day, uh, as you know, Wolf, what happens uh, with respect to the development of our energy supplies in this country is uh, very important. The president has wanted to move forward to the comprehensive uh, energy plan uh, for this country. We're implementing it with executive authorities and standing up renewable energies and doing a whole host of things uh, like that. But oil and gas uh, are very much a part of our economy and part of our energy security. And the Gulf Coast supplies about a third of the domestically produced oil and gas of the country. Exist, existing oil drilling uh, operations uh, will continue, but new ones you're putting on hold. Is that right? Existing oil operations uh, will continue. We will not uh, give out any additional permits until we complete the directive from the president, uh, which is due at the end of May on uh, the safety issues uh, that arise from this incident. Ken Salazar is the Secretary of the Interior. Uh, good luck uh, to all the men and women working on this. Uh, we're counting on you guys. We have an army working on it, and uh, we're not going to stop until uh, we get it done.